Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I'm here vacationing in South Carolina in the Buck Hall Recreation Area. It's a national forest area. And I met up with Chris here. Chris has a Volkswagen camper van and another one. He has two of these and he brought them both here today because he's going to give us a tour on both of them, but two separate videos. Hello, Chris. Welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. Welcome to South Carolina. Thanks, man. So, uh, you have the two vans. Um, let's start off with the one behind you. you uh, can you tell us a little bit about it and how everything works? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll take you guys through it. This is a 1987 uh, Volkswagen Westfalia camper. It has been pretty heavily upfitted. Um, it was... Uh, it originally was imported apparently from Germany by the original owners um, in 1987 or so, and uh, and um, uh, some friends of mine bought it in Charleston, and another friend of mine bought it in Asheville, and the friend in Asheville uh, asked me to do a bunch of restoration work on it, um, and I have, and uh, and he is since uh, traveling to New Zealand for two years, so he and I are partnering up and renting this camper and the other um, through my company called eastcoastwesties.com um, and we rent them on Outdoorsy uh, as well on that platform. So so basically what this is is a pretty heavily modified Volkswagen Westfalia camper. The camper was built by Volkswagen in Germany and then upfitted by uh, Westfalia which is a really well known um, camper upfit company in in Germany as well, um, the 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 work that they do and did to to do the Vanagon models, also called T3s, was uh, these I think started in 1980 with this upfit from Westfalia, and the last one rolled off the assembly line in 1991 or 1992. Um, so these are just extremely well designed campers. They're just basically uh, you know they're they're all over the internet now and everything. And I've actually my other life i'm a journalist and i've written about these for for outside and even the new york times um but they're they're just extraordinarily well designed uh for for what they actually are um and what they offer um like i said they're they're basically sort of a swiss army knife and the the really cool thing about what's happened with these vans in the last decade or so especially is uh the whole overlanding movement has really exploded and the value of these vans has increased thanks to companies like Go Westy, Rocky Mountain Westy, um, and and others. And uh, and and they, there's a whole huge aftermarket of products for these vans that was not available um, back when they were first produced. And that includes performance upgrades. Um, this van actually has a Ford motor in it, a Ford Focus engine um, that was uh, conceived. Um, the conversion kit was conceived by a company called Bostig Engineering, which is in Boston. They've made basically a whole plug-and-play kit that lets you take a factory Ford Focus motor, which has 40 more horsepower than a standard Vanagon motor, and basically un un unplug and unclip your Vanagon components, and then you plug in the Ford, the Ford system. Um, other things that have been done is like Fox Shocks, uh, you know, the Fox famous uh, off-road company. Um, makes a really good uh, shot kit for these now. Maybe we'll show. There, there's a dual. I'll show you back here, Patrick. There's a. Um, there's a, and maybe we'll just start with the outside. Um, so you can see a dual reservoir uh, shot kit for these vans. Um, this has a lift kit on it that was engineered by Go Westy, um, and. And it also has, uh, in addition to the Ford engine, it has a limited slip differential uh, called a Peliquin, which really gives this thing great off-road capability, even though it's two-wheel drive. Uh, you'd sort of probably call it a pre-runner. Um, of course, the, the Synchro four-wheel drive ones are the ones that are the most sought after, but this thing will go anywhere that I have any you know, responsible reason to go. Um, moving around, I'll just show you, give you guys the basics here. Um, a Luminous box. This is a rack from, oh gosh, I think this came from Rocky Mountain um, in Colorado. And 
I need to confirm that, but I'm pretty sure that's true. Um, but it's just extremely well designed. Um, and these bumpers are aftermarket bumpers that came from the that came from the same uh, place as well. There's another company called Vanigan Life that uh, that we got um, a really cool uh, set of vent replacements here for. Um, these are these actually carry engine heat away from the engine compartment, um, and they and this is a replacement for the rear window that lets you bolt hardware onto the outside of the van to keep it out of the way. Um, we have uh, power input plugs for an additional solar panel. We have an addition. I mean, we have a full time panel that I put up on the roof, um, and then the uh, another cool sort of exterior component to this is in addition to your your water input, um, this is just this would just be for city water. We have you know 110 volts that goes in and charges a battery, but also gives you shore power. And then this is a neat uh, piece that we got that actually you can you can pump your tires up. There's an ARB uh, pump inside the van that we can turn on and pump up these tires or anything else um, external to the van, and it's a really powerful, uh, really powerful pump. Um, and other, let's see, other external items on this van include uh, a light bar with, again, Vanagon Life made the uh, made the um, the mounts for it custom for Vanagon, and this just shows sort of what the aftermarket has become for Vanagons. These are a set of European uh, mirrors that are more heavy duty that were designed for it, and then um, and then we also have. From let's see, this is from a company in Raleigh. The headlight setup, and uh, so we've we've got a a, a whole um, you know new headlight setup as well for it. And the lights are just extraordinarily bright when you're off roading back here in the national forest in the middle of the night. Um, let's see, moving around. The other sort of must have to me is this ARB touring awning. Uh, these are just extremely well designed and replacement parts are really easy to get as well. Um, they're not as, as maybe luxurious looking as the ones from Fiamma, but they're super easy to deploy and they're really, really well put together. And they also have the option of a super easy, uh, zip in room that goes in and you can, you can basically add a whole, a whole bedroom to the side of the camper with the ARB zip in room. And it's really really affordable. Um, so I guess I'll move inside. And <clears throat> so this one, as I said, we've done a ton of upfit work on this and it just speaks to uh, some of the things that you can now get um, for for a van like this. Um, the This has, and I'll show under the seat too, but this has a full like USB external extra lighter adapter ports. Um, we have a, a sine wave inverter under the seat that is that powers these two outlets. Then there's also shore power outlets there. We don't have an internal shower, but I really like this little Helio a lot. I, I also write for a um, website called The Wire Cutter, and this was one of our top picks um, when I did a review of outdoor showers for The Wire Cutter. Um, the and that thing has lasted, by the way, for a really long time. Um, this is one of the, the great additions. This is an ARB um, cooler fridge, which is now a pretty well-known piece of equipment as well. Um, you just plug it in and load it up, and you can, you know, it's just, these are just great. Um, they, they consume very little power, too. And you, the other nice thing about this that I wasn't initially sold on, but it actually makes a lot of sense, is you can just take this and keep it outside of the camper so that you've got room um, to, to, to live. And I'm gonna take it out real quick, just so that I can show how the seats rotate in this eventually as well. But it's just really easy to um, take this thing in and out of the van. And you can even keep it plugged in uh, when you have it, um, when you have it outside of the van, so it's great. And then, so what we've, and then what else, the other things that we've done inside of this van, this is the original site for the West Valley refrigerator, 
basically taken out with a kit from Go Westy that um, allows for extra storage. One of the just the brilliant things about the Westphalia is just how well the cabinetry and all this is designed. It's just really sailboat quality. Um, the way that the tables deploy is just genius. Um, you know, you've got your table that swings out, then you've got two additional cupboards up underneath there. There's another table that goes into the spot right here, which I can fetch out of the closet if you would like, Patrick. Um, but you see we have huge storage areas um, up underneath here as well. And of course the Volkswagen Vanagon factory manual. This is key for anybody. Um, and another huge closet. And here's the other Here's the other table. I'll just show you real quick since I know your folks really dig uh, the minutia of these things. So this is the second table. This goes between the two front seats. In this case, normally you would not have this box here. This is a, a this is an aftermarket box that we got again. I think from um, Vanagon Life. Um, so you just screw that in there. The extra table here, and it just screws right down as well. Now, For a motorhome of this age, it's amazing how well this has held up. Well, that's the other thing about this Westphalia componentry. Um, I mean, you can look at the seats, for example, the the fabric on the seats of these, particularly the models from 1987 to 1991 is this gray fabric that just it doesn't show dirt very well and it is extremely durable as are just i mean this is all original stuff so i mean you think this is now over 30 years old and look at the kind of condition that it's in it's in it's in just great shape so i don't think that westphalia probably even had an idea that they were designing such a durable vehicle when they were doing it maybe they did um, then up underneath this cabinet um, among the other just really cool things that they've done so here's a dish drain or just an extra surface for cooking and cleaning on and that sort of thing that lifts up and you've got your two, your two burner stove we got this um, SureFlow faucet um, and the, this is an aftermarket uh, faucet but it lets you the Westy the original Westy one doesn't let you control the flow rate this one does and it also just goes right out of the way. So I could hear like a 12 volt demand pump. Correct. On. That's exactly what it has. It has a 12 volt pump that uh, that that just runs off of the auxiliary battery. And, and where does the wastewater go? Right out the bottom of the van in this case. If you were going to have, unlike a lot of other campers, um, including my Euro van, um, this one just drains the gray water to the ground. It doesn't have an additional tank. Um, the adventure wagon Vanagon campers do, but you, if you were going to actually camp somewhere that you need to get rid of your gray water, you'd want a, like a rolling external tank. And then we have uh, the other just cool engineered things, you know, um, these screens. Yeah, these are original screens here. They're still in terrific shape. Um, these curtains are original curtains. They're a little dirty, but I mean, they've held up just so well. Um, so all the windows can be curtained um, so that you can so that you can you know have your privacy when you're sleeping in here. And there's just an example of how how that goes. Um, that's that you know. So when you're posted up somewhere, you can you can have your uh, have your privacy. We put this is originally a fluorescent light. We replaced it with LEDs, which draw heaps less power. And um, and then back here we also added just an additional uh, 12 volt um, outlet assembly, and and that actually has been useful um, in an unexpected way because as you can see here too, I have two fans that point forward. One of the weird things about the engineering of these vans is the stock air conditioner. It's very rare to find um, dashboard air conditioning in a van again. Um, they're uh, Small car conversions in Seattle makes a, makes a front AC, um, but the air conditioning is actually in the back of these and it, and it pushes forward. So, especially here in the low country where it feels like the equator in the summertime, um, you really need to have these just these little fans just pushing the cold air forward. Um, and these air conditioners are uh, 
they're they're not the best in the world this this actually i've got it set up so now it works pretty well but um they're just they're yeah they struggle a bit um so that's something to know if you live in florida and you really need to have this working well um so then um, underneath the seat, I'll show you just some of the stuff that we've done to make it more like sort of a modern camper that you'd find from Winnebago or, or any other company. Um, so you lift the seat up and this, I'll show you how to deploy the bed too. So what I've done, I know it seems kind of crazy, but it, there's a purpose behind all of it. So we'll start here. This is a um, shore power battery charger. Um, it receives power from when you're plugged in at a campsite, charges the auxiliary battery. There's also electricity coming in from the solar panels um, that comes into the auxiliary battery as well. Um, as you can see, it's wired for our outlets. And then these um, battery cables, uh, these come in from the alternator um, and they basically go in, distribute the electricity. And then this is, um, a sine wave inverter which creates very clean electrical signal so that you can run you know, sort of high-tech electronics off of this inverter on household power and you plug those into here. And that's 600 watts? This is a 600 watt okay. and I mean you know if you're gonna run a, a microwave oven or something like that this is not enough juice but we're not running a microwave oven in here. If you need a microwave you know you probably don't want a Westphalia. Um, and then <clears throat> to monitor it all we have a Blue C M2 uh, monitor that just tells you everything um, that you that you might want to know about how many watts or how many volts how many volts are coming in from the solar panel how much capacity is in the battery it's just really neat and it was a it was a ton of work but you know I mean we basically have created an off grid little zombie mobile uh, that you know. Um, there's a lot of fun to camp in. Now, is this a bed too? This is a bed, yeah. So this this van will sleep four. This bed is a little narrower than a, it's it's wider than a single, but narrower than a double. Um, I'll show you how this deploys. It's really, really simple. All you have to do is lift up on this handle right here. Oh, and the other thing we've done after market, before I do that real quick, Patrick, um, these vans did not come with shoulder belts, which is a glaring omission um, because they came with shoulder belts in Europe. Um, so you can get aftermarket kit from Go Westy that lets you uh, attach shoulder belts to this. And there's even a company in Germany that will let you put headrests on here, which I would highly recommend if you're going to get one of these to carry your kids with, ultimately. Um, so, to, But to deploy the bed, you just lift up on this knob, yank this back, and push the cushion back. And there you go. So there's your downstairs bedroom right there and then I'll when we go around I'll show you that what's in that closet in the back as well when I open up the hatch um, and then to do the upper bed which is you know one of the things that people love about these vans so much to do the pop top is equally simple you just you know, here push it up and then this one has a, um, three-window tent that is also screened. This is an aftermarket replacement tent. It has a water repellent fabric. Um, if you're going to camp with one of these, you do want the water repellent fabric, obviously, or else you want to get a rain fly. But um, one, one thing I do like about the Eurovan more than this, and there's, there's great points to either one, the Eurovan has a waterproof tent. Um, it's like waterproof, waterproof. I've been in some pretty heavy storms and haven't had any water come in. This is, this one, I think if it was storming really, really hard, you might get some mist blow through if you were actually camped up here. But then to deploy the bed is really simple too. You just fold this, this forward, lift right here, and then there's your bed. And we obviously have a sleeping pad up there as well and then our wires from the solar panel um, so that's sort of the basics and then the other great thing about um, about these campers in particular is just the way that uh, is just the amount of space that you have when you're um, 
when you're kicked back in it, you know, I mean, and I'll rotate the seats and show you what I mean by that. Oh yeah, and up top is a skylight as well for when you're um, camped out and you want some air circulation or more air circulation, but you get a lot of air circulation with the, uh, you know, with the three zipper um, tent on this van. So there's that. And I'll show you real quick, I'll rotate this seat just so you can get an idea of um, what it's like when you rotate it and show you guys what's what we have up at the, up at the dashboard. So the, the, you know, the thing that makes these so great, or one of the other things that make these so great, and I think is key for any small van camper, is a rotating seat. Um, so you just slide the seat forward on this, you push a little lever down, and then you just rotate the thing right around. And this seat will only go um, 90 degrees in this van, but it's still, you know, then you can post up with your laptop and, uh, and just sit and enjoy nature um, while you're getting your work done, you know? And we also have, let's see, other stuff in the dash of this. We put in a Pioneer, um, Pioneer Bluetooth CarPlay, Apple and Android CarPlay uh, setup. Um, this is the controls for the air conditioner. Um, this is the input for the CarPlay, an additional power outlet here up in the dash um, that it did not come with. Um, this is normally an ashtray, but we don't smoke. Um, and then I'll show you, this is a pretty nifty little feature right here. This little Android phone actually controls <coughs> the lights. And I'll show you, let me open up this cabinet real quick and I'll show you another thing that we put in here. Um, so I, I mentioned the ARB air compressor. I mounted the air compressor to this shelf right here. And, uh, and it's actually controlled by that Android phone, as are the external lights. Um, and this, in case you're wondering, is the front window curtain. It just has buttons on it. And if you want to give yourself privacy when you're camped out, you just snap the buttons and then the whole front window um, goes in the curtain as well. And then maybe we'll walk around and I'll show you the sort of driver's compartment and what the different step is up here. So what I was, and the other, another cool thing about the, the Bostig um, engine conversion is it, let's see if I can get the, it lets you know in real time what the engine's doing. We just have a scan gauge, if it'll come on, let's see. Well, when the car's running, yeah, there it goes. Um, you can tell your miles per gallon, the voltage of the alternator the water temperature, the RPMs, and a whole bunch of other stuff, and it lets you, it lets you have a real-time uh, update on what the motor is doing, which is great. Um, this is a little Bluetooth-powered controller um, from ARB. You, ARB actually ships this with this system, um, and they ship this phone with the system, but you can control things like the air compressor. Should hear it in a second. Um, and then out front, you can control the light cannon, which is these two lights right here. Vision X light cannons. And then the light bar up top, which is just crazy bright. Um, you can do some damage to So I guess all this eyes. stuff ties into some back end system? It, it all, all this stuff ties in basically to the, uh, I'll show you where I ran it into. Um, but basically the, the wiring comes in from the back, which is where the motor is, comes up into a secondary battery compartment back here. And then there's, so there's two elements. There's an the element under the front seat. And then there's the stuff that I put back here, which includes, this is the Bluetooth box for the ARB system. This is a solar charge controller for the for that panel or extras. Um, it shows us at 12.7 volts. Then just a, a you know, a circuit, um, this is called a bus bar, and it lets you bring all your wires in and have a centrally located place for your wires to come in. And it also has fuses on it so that you don't blow something up if one element messes up and overheats. Is that something like my, uh, I have an S-Pod in my modification? Yes, okay. it would be, it would be, yeah, really similar. Um, and then the other, 
and then I also brought the wiring in underneath here up to here for the headlights for example and um, so yeah it's like I said there's a box there and it just is Bluetooth controlled and then this uh, this little nifty thing just and you can add components to it as well so if I added other lights or wanted to add other uh, pieces to it you just it says accessory three accessory four etc I mean you can run a bunch of other stuff including even like a pressure controller for the tires which we don't use and we don't really I mean we don't need it um, but some people might want it we really geek on that stuff then as far as just other stuff on the dash another thing that we added is this billet aluminum shifter um, Vanagon shifters are noted are notably really uh, they're very mushy and that thing makes the shifting just precise as a sports car so um, this thing has been a definite labor of love um, but uh, it's 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 now basically as capable as the Eurovan that I'm going to show you next so it takes a lot though and, and one point I would make to people who are thinking about buying a Westfalia is uh, forego this kind of stuff until you've got your fuel lines working until you've got good brakes and your basic componentry is all working don't buy this extra crap and bolt it on because it won't it might look cool in a parking lot when you're broken down but you the whole idea behind one of these is to actually be able to travel in it um, so with this system right here you unbuckle up here at the top and down at the bottom Swing it open. You have little cotter pins that hold it open if you can put them in place. And same with this one. And this is another sort of equation that you have to ask yourself because it is a little bit of a hassle. I mean, you get a lot more extra storage with these with these things, but you know, to get into the hatch, you do have to do extra work, which you know may or may not be something you want to do um, but they are pretty great and that also serves of course as a ladder to get you onto the roof um, so here's the here's the rear of the van and uh, you can see our bed um, and then this is it has one last cabinet in the back which I let that shelf fall down um, but it's just, you know, more extra storage in the back. This is more storage back here. This has to be opened up for the air conditioner um, to work. But, and then the engine, of course, is underneath here. Do you want me to show, show you guys the engine? I will do it. So to get sure, to that's going to be the most common comment if we didn't put it in yeah, there. Yeah, 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 I can dig it. Especially with the swap. Yeah, especially with the swap. So to get to the motor on these, you, we have, and this is all sound, sort of sound deadening equipment as well, just to make it run more quiet. But to get to these motors, do this fiberglass top. And so this is the ZTEC Ford engine. Um, these are not legal in California um, because you would have to get all kinds of Air Resources Board approval for it. So know that if you want to buy a Vanagon in California, um, you will have to jump through major hoops if you want to even think about having one of these in California. This is a ZTEC 2003. Ford Focus engine. Um, it's basically stock. Um, it was, it, it just came, I'm not sure if this one came brand new in a box or if it came from uh, the, if it came from a junkyard, but um, it doesn't make the thing a hot rod by any stretch because we've also added a lot of weight with the extra components to this, but it makes it really reliable. Um, and it also makes it so that you can get parts like alternators, fuel injectors, distributors um, you know all the main components you can get in an auto zone whereas because these vans are now 30 years old it's getting hard to get engine parts so if you're gonna run a stock van again motor you got to carry all that stuff underneath the back seat with you or somewhere so that you have spare parts in case an alternator fails or stuff like that this and this also has like I said about 40 more horsepower so this will climb the grade up to Asheville North Carolina at, at highway speed where um, I used to have to pull over into the into the slower lane with uh, with my other previous Westie. One of my other previous Westies that had a stock engine in it, um, and it's like I said, it's just it's just really reliable, and I love it. Um, what would someone 
expect to pay to do a conversion like this? Probably minimum of, I would say, with the with the Bostig kit. Um, I think the kit alone, with all of the, the hoses, components, everything that you're going to get to, to bolt this engine on is, you know, at least three or four thousand dollars and maybe even more and then the engine itself you can source from a junkyard for 300 bucks you know and and this is an engine that is that is this is the most common this is sort of the vw beetle motor of the two, of the early 2000s it's they're super common they're they're all over the world um and ford vehicles all over the world so um if you want to go do a an overlanding expedition to south america or europe you can still get parts for for this engine so you're but you'd be looking i think if you were going to if you were going to do the conversion yourself probably eight thousand minimum if you're going to have somebody else do it you're probably looking at ten thousand and there are other uh people also do conversions with subaru motors and volkswagen 1.8 turbo motors um there's a company called stevens auto house in california that that does a great 1.8 t conversion but and then go westy sells um its version of a stock VW motor, which is is has several different levels of performance upgrades, and I I mean I definitely recommend that that motor if you live in California as well because it's still easy to get parts for Vanigans in California and, and a lot of places out west. So it's just kind of a matter of what you uh, you know, where you're going to be and 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 what's legal and what your needs are, I guess. Now earlier in the video you <laughs> mentioned uh, outdoorsy. Uh, that these are available for rental. Can you walk us through the process? Yeah, um, if you, so I have, I, I, I kind of decided to try Outdoorsy for a Lark and it ended up being a, a, a good experience. Um, you basically look up where you want to camp, um, in this case, Charleston, South Carolina, and tell them, you know, tell it that you want a Eurovan or, or tell it that you want a camper van. And, uh, and these vans will pop up. I also have a website that has my campers on it, eastcoastwesties.com, and that's westies, W-E-S-T-Y-S.com. Um, and it's sort of like Airbnb, except they provide insurance and you know other sort of things that you'd expect if you're renting a car. But it's, very, it's camping specific, unlike um, the company Tura that a lot of people also use. So I've just decided to stick with, with Outdoorsy and, and my own. Uh, website in this case um, but it's it's pretty it seems like it's pretty pain free um, I've I've been renting this is a new rental we just sort of put this on only really recently I just got my first rental for it the Eurovan I've had probably 20 or more rentals and and generally you know it's been a positive experience I don't look at it as a way to make a living it's just a way to keep you know keep some money in the pocket and also to keep these vans on the road because it it, it provides um you know it just it's just maintenance money you know so they rent it online they book it online they find your vehicle mm -hmm. um they would either come to you you would meet up with them drop off the vehicle i guess Correct. you would give them some type of instruction yeah i'll basically give them a, a condensed version of what i just did here okay um but yeah it, it's it's key to for anybody that wants to rent something on outdoorsy whether it's yeah, whether you want to rent it from somebody else or or you're thinking of renting your own vehicle, you got to spend time with the renter um, because otherwise, you know, they're going to be calling you and they also are going to be confused and, and frustrated and they may break something. So it's really crucial that you, you know, spend that time going over the systems. Okay. And um, I know some of the renters, uh, the companies that rent them require some type of roadside assistance mm -hmm. or suggested is that something you would suggest i generally require it if, unless they have a triple a platinum or a, a good sam rv account already um because you know i mean and and you know it, it just it just makes sense i and and i don't want to have to you know knock on wood knock on metal i haven't had to do that but i don't want to have to go you know, fetch somebody off the side of the road. It's way better that they get roadside assistance, which covers a rental car and, and um, you know, and possibly lodging for them as well, you know. So I, I definitely recommend the insurance packages because, I mean, you're renting a, you're, no matter who you're renting from, you're still renting somebody's personal vehicle. And, you know, hopefully, yeah, I mean, I keep mine really well maintained, but you, you never know. You never know what's going to happen on the road. Yeah. 
And one, one last question before we move on to the next van in the next video. How do you and your family utilize the, these vans? I know, uh, I know um, the next one we're going to film, I think you're using mostly. Um, but what is your lifestyle like with the um, vans? I mean, I use, my kids are getting older. And so we actually bought, uh, a, as I told you, a, a Shasta Air Flight that we can even, and a, which is like a vintage, um, it looks like a vintage camper, but it's actually a new one that we can tow with the Eurovan here, um, which gives us sort of two bedrooms. But I mean, for this van or either of these, I mean, they're, they're everything. They're sort of surf mobiles. They are uh, mobile offices. As I said, I'm a, I'm a reporter by trade. And so if I have to go cover a story, it's a whole lot easier to take a vehicle like this and, and use it as a mobile office after I'm done covering a political rally or something like that. or to file a story. Um, and then when we're camping, um, we'll usually put out the ARV awning on the side so that we've got two bedrooms, the kids can stay in the camper and my wife and I usually stay in the, in the ARV room, you know? And, um, you know, these are set up, this one, they're both set up to go fairly well off the beaten path. So, but I mean, you know, it's fire roads. It's not like, you know, crazy four by four trails or that sort of thing to get up to some, you know, mountaintop, um, that's accessible by fire road in say North Carolina, you know, for us. And so that's sort of what we, what we use it for. I mean, one thing that's always been interesting to me is like when I first got my first Westie, um, this whole sort of, and that was in 97 or so, you were just able to start getting like your first laptop modems. And I remember I was in the, in the Nevada desert and was able to file a story um, from my Westie uh and that was just really eye-opening to me and now of course that's a common occurrence people live in their vans and with a you know decent wi-fi speed um cellular speed they can they can do all kinds of of work like that and it that wasn't wasn't part of the mix or it was just starting to become part of the mix when i got my first one well chris thank you for taking the time today to go through very detailed your uh, Volkswagen Westphalia with yeah. us today. I'm going to include links in the description so you could find uh, his website and check out the vans uh, online. Well, thank you for spending time with, with us today. This is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'd love it and we'll see you soon.